morning, I'm going to preach on a topic that is usually not preached in many churches these days. This morning I preached on the power of the gospel, power to heal, power to save, power to deliver, and power to give us miracles. Those are all things that we receive here and now. But that is not all there is to Christian faith. There is much more, but we do not often think about it. So this morning, I'm uh, going to be a pastor, teacher, and I'm going to mix preaching and teaching because we need teaching in our churches. And so, pastor already talked about heaven. How many of you want to go to heaven? I see a few hands. And for the rest of you, I'll preach the message. Okay. <laughs> many religions do not have much to say about the future life. If at all there is something, it is very uncertain. In Hinduism, it takes so many, you know, avatars or reincarnation, so many stages of life, sometimes millions of rebirths before they attain the moksha or the final state. And uh, unfortunately, Judaism has very little to talk about the future. They do talk about a lot of things here on earth, good life, which will be a reflection of what will happen in the future. All of that is good. And science says, you know, once a person dies, he may live again. But there is no guarantee. Philosophy says he hopes to live again. Not sure. Ethics says he ought to live again. Maybe so, but not too sure. Atheism says he will never live again. You know, an atheist... When he dies, he's all dressed up. There is no place to go. But Jesus Christ says, he shall live again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus said here in John 11 and 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live again. And he said, praise the Lord for that hope. We have hope. I want to build our faith in Jesus Christ for the future. We have a great future ahead of us. I remember the story of a woman who was looking for gold. You know, she was looking all over the place, stooping down and, you know, walking every day looking for the gold. And after many years, she was not able to look up. She was bent down. Many Christians are like this. Looking down, what do I have here for me now? That is the question. It's all important. We need healing. We need deliverance. We need money. We need miracles in our lives. All that is good and all that is provided through Jesus Christ. But seldom do we think about the future. But I thank God, God has a great plan for us. Our home is not here. Our home is beyond the skies, hallelujah. Look up, because God has prepared a place for us that is called heaven. So I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about heaven. Nobody wants to talk about the second coming of Christ anymore. Seldom do we hear it in the United States of America. Churches don't talk about it. Churches talk about, you know, what we can get now, what is important now, how to live a prosperous life. I do believe in all of that. All of that is good. But what happens when you die? Leave this earth. Do you have a place to go? Thank God he has a plan for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you give the Lord a hand? This morning, I want to build your faith today, and I want to build your hope today. 
And so, for our text today, I'm going to read from Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven. Can you say, my citizenship? All of you, please. My citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father Almighty, interceding. His priestly ministry is continuing. And also, the Word of God has promised that He's going to come again. Amen? How many of you know that Jesus is coming again? Can you say amen? amen. I need to get a stronger amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's coming again. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And I want to look at um, four things concerning heaven this morning. Number one, heaven is a real place. Can we say that together? Heaven. Heaven, everybody. Heaven. Heaven, is a real place. heaven is a real place. There is a place called heaven and it is real. And the word of God talks about three heavens. Remember, I'm going to teach you this morning. These are realities that we need to comprehend and understand. Heaven is a real place. Isaiah 45 and 18 says, for thus saith the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. Here it says, God created the heavens. Not just one heaven, heavens. And so, the first heaven is the atmospheric heaven. How do we know that? Isaiah 55 and 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. In other words, this is the first heaven, the atmospheric heaven. Where we live, the rain comes down from there. When you fly in the airplane, you can see clouds all over the place. And uh, that is what we consider as the first heaven. So the second one is the galaxies, where the galaxies are. You know, Genesis 1 and 14. Then God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. The expanse we see over us, you know, that is where the galaxies are hung. We see stars, we see the moon, we see the sun and all of these and many, many more galaxies that we don't even see of a naked eye cannot see. That is the second heaven. Then we have another heaven higher than that. That is the heaven where God dwells. Let us see where we can find this in the scripture. Second Corinthians 12 and 2. I know a man in Christ 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Paul had a supernatural experience. He feels that he was taken up to the third heaven where he heard things that he has not heard here on earth. A new place, wonderful place where he wanted to be there forever, but he came back and he said, so beautiful place. That is the heaven where God dwells. So we always say that it is up. That's why 
You know, this morning I used an illustration of uh, Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin was a wonderful teacher. He was known all over the world. And uh, wh when he was a young boy, he was very sickly. And he was bedridden for many years. And um, one day he died. When he died, he went down and down and down into the lower parts of the earth where there was fire. And on one side, there was darkness. There was the presence of evil. And all uh, the cohorts of the demons and all of these things, creatures. And he was so terrified, he did not want to stay there. So he cried out, came back again. And, you know, the way of salvation was explained to him. He received Christ into his heart. Then he died again. He was a very weakly person. And when he died the second time, he was going up and up and up into the third heaven where the presence of Jesus is, where everything is so beautiful. Oh, he can hear the wonderful singing of the birds and he could see people. We are real people. When we die, we are going to leave this body. This body is only for this life here on earth. It is transient. It is temperate. You know, it is, it, 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 it is so short-lived. We are here on earth only for a few years. 100 years, maybe. Maybe less than that. Then we have to go. Man is made up of three, you know, parts. It is the body, the mind, and the spirit or the soul. The soul leaves the body and goes into the presence of God. If you know the Lord, if you have received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So what am I, what am I saying? There is a place called heaven. It's so wonderful. It's so marvelous. So there are three heavens mentioned in the Bible. So we need to be thinking about heaven. It doesn't matter what we are doing here. I want us to know that we are short-lived. Just after leaving the United States on the 30th of October, two people died whom I knew very closely. One was a relative of mine, distant relative, he died at the age of maybe 63 or 64. There was another young lady, probably about 40 years of age, was, you know, she had the cancer. She did not enjoy life very much. She used to be one of our members. She died. Two people died. So heartbreaking. But where did they go? Thank God they knew God. I missed their funerals. I knew them very well. So it is time to think about heaven. Let us thank God for the life here. But heaven is real. Hallelujah. Heaven is a real place. And because of Jesus, we will be going to heaven and spend our eternity with him. Hallelujah. Oh, we should rejoice today. Can you give the Lord a hand this morning? Let us get excited about heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Heaven is a reuniting place. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is a reuniting place. Second Samuel 12 and 23. But now he is dead. Talking about David's son. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him but he shall not return to me. David was fasting, he was weeping, he was before the Lord, he was uh, falling prostrate before the Lord, crying out to God to, you know, uh, heal his son. But he died. Then he understood. He has gone to a place and he's going to see him again. Many of us have lost our loved ones. Maybe our father or mother or loved one, sister or brother, or even our children. We have lost them. But, oh, let us have hope. 
in heaven we will see them again. Hallelujah. They're not lost forever. They're alive. He said he will see him. He's not talking about a dead child. He's talking about a child that is alive and well. Our life after death, the death is only a separation from this body. But we are much more alive when we leave this body because our spirit is going to live forever and ever and ever. That's why it is so important that we consider this life and live a godly life. This is not just attending the church once in a while, singing some songs, enjoying. And it is much more than that. We are preparing for a life that is going to last forever. That is called eternity. Hallelujah. We are going to live for it in eternity forever and ever and ever. And it is a reuniting place. The Bible talks about gathering to our own. When the saints of the Old Testament died, the Bible is talking about them as gathering to their own. Genesis 25 and 8. Then Abraham breathed for his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years and was gathered to his own people. How many of you want to see your loved ones in heaven? I see a few hands. A survey was taken some time ago and uh, when the survey was taken, they said uh, they want to 31% of the people said they want to see their moms. Only 16% of the people said they want to see their dads. And when it came to seeing their spouses, only 10% said they want to see their spouses again. I see that is something wrong. This is the time to get it right. So, we will see our loved ones. And so, if you want to see your spies, spouse, not spies, spouse, let us, um, you know, uh, get our relationship right, live right, love each other, and so we can spend the time together in all eternity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we will recognize them when we see them. It is not a ghost floating in the air, smoke, no. Real people. See, on that Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus and the disciples were on the mountain, you know, Moses and Elijah appeared and they talked to them. See? How did they recognize them? Because they are recognizable. We will keep our identity in all eternity, but only we will be perfect. Okay? If you have some problem right now, don't worry about it. We are going to look perfect. Our bodies are going to be perfect. We will have no sickness in our bodies. There will be no sorrows in heaven. It is a place of rejoicing. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful place. It is a marvelous place. We will recognize Jesus. We will recognize our loved ones. We are going to see Adam and Eve, I hope. We are going to see David. We are going to see the disciples. All of these wonderful people. We are going to see, you know, Jacob. That's the planter. We are going to see him. All of these wonderful people. It is going to be a wonderful place and we are going to be rejoined with our loved ones. Praise the Lord. This is called heaven. Reuniting place. 
a real place, a reuniting place, and then heaven is a rejoicing place. Revelation 14 and 13 says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and thy works will follow them. You know, we are so working hard here on earth. Get up early in the morning. I was in Dubai. People are rushing, rushing, getting up early at 5.30, going to work, coming back home at 9.30 in the evening, working so hard. But in heaven we will rest. Oh, there'll be a, it'll be a place of rest. And not only we will rest, it is a place where we'll enjoy. Luke 16 and 25. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus evil things. But now he is comfort comforted and you are tormented. This is a picture of what will happen in heaven. Here is Lazarus. Poor man, beggar, begging for food, waiting for crumbs to fall down from the rich man's table. But the rich man is living sumptuously, clad in fine linen, living um, in a beautiful palace, and he has a lot of people to attend to him. All of these but the poor man, Lazarus, beggar, died. The rich man was, rich man, uh, rich man died and he was buried. But the poor man, Lazarus, died and he was taken to the bosom of Abraham. See, where he was comforted. But the other man was crying out in torment, in pain. See, in the olden Old Testament times, it is believed, I believe uh, 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 with uh, some of these scholars, that there were two compartments of what was called the Hades and Abraham's bosom. The Abraham's bosom today is the paradise. Jesus said, if you live, die today, you will be with me in paradise with the thief. Today, you shall, be, you shall be with me in paradise. So that is the place of the saved. And uh, that is the place, you know, where uh, 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 the, 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 the righteous people go. But the other place is the place of torment. It's still happening today. If you die without Christ, you will be in a place of torment. Make sure you have Jesus in your heart and you are living right today. And you are walking with him today. You serve him today. You worship him today. Your life should be an example. You need to live right in order to be with Jesus when you die. That's why when Jesus comes in rapture, rapture is the first stage of the second coming of Jesus. Okay? There are two stages. Jesus is coming down for the saints when the dead, then the dead in Christ will rise up and those who are alive and serving God will be transformed and then they will have a glorious body like that of Jesus. Okay? The second coming is later. Seven years later. During that time, there will be tribulation here on earth. That the world has never seen before. Terrible days. Antichrist will come upon the scene. You know, the other day they were talking about using chips. Chips to be implanted. It is already uh, being done in the United States. It may not be the 666, but nevertheless, the technology is here. Over 2,000 years ago, when the book of Revelation was written, they had no idea about this thing. It was impossible. 
to even imagine about it. But today the technology is here. The size of a rice grain can be implanted on your hand or on your forehead. With the number 666 without which no man can buy. They're talking about to be used here in India as well. It is coming from the word of God. When Jesus come in rapture, the church will be taken. If you are a believer, you will be taken with him. If you are not a believer, you will be left out. And you will be going through seven years of tribulation where Antichrist will be ruling. He will have control of everybody through the use of the chips. You cannot hide from him. Why am I talking about it? I think we are living in the end time. Jesus is coming soon. The church is sleeping. They're not ready. They're careless. They're living for the world. I want you to raise your head and see that the coming of the Lord is so soon. I firmly believe that everything that I study, everything that I see, everything that I hear about it in the news are all relating to the end time events. Earthquakes so rapidly happening and uh, at an increasing pace. And all of the epidemics and problems and all of these false messiahs. The other day I was uh, looking at the picture of a Russian messiah. He's uh, all clothed. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a, I wish I could show, that, show you that on the um, overhead screen. He's all clad like Jesus Christ. Same gown, same beard, same look. And people are worshipping. This is a late model Jesus. False messiahs, earthquakes, famines. Then in another place, it says terrors. Terrorism is on the increase. Like it has never happened before. Terrorism, these are all the signs of the coming of the Lord. So church, let us get ready because he is coming soon. We do not want to be left out. Oh, Oh, the place that he has prepared for you is heaven. That's why we read in John chapter 14, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. When I have prepared it, I will come back again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, so there you can be also. Hallelujah. How many are hoping to be taken with him? Hallelujah. If he's coming today, get ready, church. Get ready. Live right. Receive him as your personal Lord and Savior because your home is not here. Your home is beyond the sky. Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is a reuniting place. Heaven is a rejoicing place because heaven is a place where there will be no robbers no thieves. Nobody will die in heaven. Read Revelation 21. And God will be with them. Hallelujah. God's presence will be with them. And uh, you don't have to close your doors. No robber can come there. No evil will be there. No tears, no pain, no sorrow, no sickness. It is a wonderful place. It is a place where you can rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Heaven is a rejoicing place. Then I want to talk about heaven as a rewarding place. Heaven as a rewarding place. Revelation 14 and 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their laborers. And their works will follow them. Listen to me very carefully, please. Their works will follow them. It is not talking about salvation. 
You don't have to work for salvation. Your salvation is by grace. It is given to you by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. And um, you know, you don't have to work for your salvation, but you do have to do good works after you are saved. Do you follow me? You want to do good works after you are saved. Because there is going to be a test. One of the things that you're going to do when you go to heaven is you'll have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Many of you watch Olympics. You know, on the final day, you will either win gold medal or silver medal or bronze medal. And so there will be a stage in there. The first place goes up there for gold. The next one there. And the third one down here. There will be a gradation, an evaluation of how you have performed. God being a just God, he is not to treat everyone equally. You can see that here on earth. If you are a good worker, you get a raise. You get promoted. You got, get good positions. If you are a lazy person, if you don't do things right, you don't get more money. You don't get the promotion. It's the same thing because God is a just God. He is looking at you every day. What you are doing, are you faithful? You remember the story of the um, talents? When the master left, he left five talents. And he left two and one. And the, 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 the first two groups increased it, doubled it. And the one who had one said, this master is a crazy master. I don't think he's going to reward me. He buried it. But the talent he had, a talent of gold is worth $5 million. It was worth something. There are talents invested in you. Talents to sing, talents to preach, talents to teach, talents to serve God. But if you are unfaithful, when the master comes, he will judge the one who did not use his star and it will be taken away from him. It is the same thing in heaven. If you are not serving God here today, if you are not faithful today in your living, in your giving, in serving God, not using your talents, God will judge you. And some of us will be ashamed because we were not faithful. Let me ask you this question today. Are you faithful to God in serving him, in living right? Or after the church you are living just like you want to live? God is watching you very closely. God is watching you very closely. Look at this. There are five crowns given for various purposes. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved. He will receive the crown of life. Which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Talk about temptation. Devil will bring you temptation every day. For some people it is drinking. For some people it is. You know drugs. For some people, it is different thing. You know, they are tempted daily. The devil will tempt you. God will not tempt you. The devil will tempt you, and he wants you to fall. But if you are faithful in your living, the word of God says he will give you a crown of life. Hallelujah. You will be recognized in all eternity. People standing by, walking by, will know that you have been living right here on earth because there will be a sign, a crown on your head. Then there will be a crown of glory. First Peter 5 and 4, and when the chief shepherd appears, 
you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. In the olden days, the crowns were wreath or perishable items, leaves, flowers or whatever. But this is a crown that will never fade away. The other day we were in Dubai, I guess. We were um, visiting a shop. And um, we noticed um, some beautiful flowers were in a glass jar or container. And when asked, the lady said, these are real living flowers preserved. So well preserved. And um, so I was amazed that they were preserved. So for those who serve God, and especially pastors, I don't want you to get jealous. I will have a special crown in heaven. That is called the crown of glory. You know, shepherding is not easy. Pastor Matthew's job is not easy. He has to identify with you, feel your pain when you have pain. When you are sick, he has to pray for you. When you are in need, he has to visit you. He has all of you on his chest. Just like the, the priest in the Old Testament was carrying the 12 tribes on his chest always. The pastor's job is not an easy job, but I want you to pray for your pastors daily so that God will sustain them, give them strength, and use them mightily. So pastors will be rewarded, and they will have a crown of glory. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate, in all things, but they do obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. I already talked about it. You know, competes, competing. Some people compete, but they don't win. We need to run in such a way that we will finish the goal. Don't drop out. Many people start their Christian life. They're so enthusiastic. They're so excited about the Christian life. But after a while, when problems come, when persecution comes, when people speak against you, you want to drop out. No. Run the race. Running every day. Running every day until you win the prize. Finally, there is a crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. You see this? Many people... Write these verses on their obituary. When they die, said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the fight, faith. You know, they never even walked a righteous life. One day a man died. And he was lying in state. And people were preaching wonderful things about this man. He, but he was a wicked man. He was, they were talking about great things about this man. He was this and he was that and he was such a wonderful man. And the wife asked the kid, his, are they talking about your dad? So they don't live a life that is acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God. But when they die, they talk about all of these. But we are called to run the race keep our faith, and finish our course. We have to run, live faithfully till the end. We need to be faithful till the end, and then we will receive our crown. Let me ask you this today. Where will you go if you die today? I know you don't want to hear this. Where will you go if you die today? How many of you can for sure 
say that you will go to heaven? Let me see your hand. There are so many hands that are not raised today. You need to have the assurance of your salvation. Some people don't know how to get saved. Some people did not have the opportunity. But I'm going to take a few minutes to pray for you. The most important thing in our life is to know Jesus. Receive him into your heart. Trust him. Believe in his death on the cross of Calvary for your sins. And when you receive him, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that you have to believe with your heart Jesus died for you and confess it with your mouth. That means you have to openly confess it before other people. I know in America, when you get married, you know, there is a time when you have been engaged, then they come together for the wedding day, and the pastor calls the bride and the groom and asks the question, do you take this woman to be your husband? She has to say yes. If she didn't say yes, they are not married. Man has to say the same thing. That is what he call confession. When a president is sworn in, he has to you know, do certain confession or agreement or the swearing. It's the same thing with salvation. If you have never openly said that you received Jesus, then you are not saved in the light of the word of God. So I want to give you that opportunity today. I want you to get saved and be ready for heaven. How many of you want to go to heaven? Let me see your hands. How many of you want to go to heaven? But I know some of you are not ready today. So I'm going to pray with you today. Pray this prayer and prayer of confession, repenting of your sins, and, um, you know, promising God that you are going to walk in the light. And if you do that, if you happen to die today or sometime later, you will be in heaven with Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord.